Hey, welcome back to Justin Timberlake. How's the experience? Um, we're actually discussing section 4.1 out of um, our book for AP Stats. We're talking about other random, other random sampling methods besides just simplified or simple random samples. So we're going to formalize some up here. We're going to talk about um, the stratified one that we just did in the experiential one. If you didn't get a chance to check that out, um, hit the link below. And then we're also going to talk about um, something called cluster sampling. So we're going to kind of split this up a little bit left of half. And so the first one is called a stratified random sample. Strat see that okay? Ooh, that's nice. You're not getting all of that weird stratified. Doesn't matter. You guys don't care. I just, just care that I'm trying to give you the best experience possible. Well, then learn how to write better. Okay, thank you. You're not wrong. Okay, so stratified random sample. What that is is you're going to split the population. into groups. Those groups are called strata. And choose a SRS from each. Actually, it should be an S. Sorry, grammar issue. That's what happens when your wife is an English major. Just giving you guys the heads up right now. All right, so anyway, so stratified random sample. You're going to split everybody into groups, and then you're going to randomly pick one from each of those groups, or two or three, however many you decide to do. Okay, so you still have a simp you still have a random component to it. You're just making sure that certain areas are for sure getting sampled. Okay, in our case, it happened to be different rows of the Justin Timberlake experience. So for a, there, another one is called a cluster sample. Ugh, sample. And what a cluster sample does is you're going to end up taking po um, the population is already pre-grouped. So the population is grouped by location. And our simple random sample. And you take a simple random sample of which groups to look at. Okay. Wow, those zones seem really, really similar. Yeah, they kind of are. Here's the difference. Okay. Here, what you're going to do is that you're going to have your groups, and you can do a simple random sample from each group. All right? Here, what you're going to do is you're going to find a simple random sample of groups to look at. So, very popular one that happens is oftentimes, like you always hear about how, oh, the test scores in the United States and the test scores in Finland and the test scores, you know, wherever, okay? A lot of times what they do for things like that is that they pick random schools and then go to those schools to pick either, you know, the entire senior class, all of their SAT scores, things like that, okay? So they will oftentimes just randomly pick high schools from around the United States and those are the high schools that get tested or get their data looked at. Now, truthfully, they kind of combine the both of them because they actually will randomly pick urban, suburban, rural schools, stuff like that. But you get the idea. We're going to look at the high school. We're going to pick high schools at random from across the state, and we're going to look at what's going on there. Okay? So that's how clusters work. What stratified, what stratified would do would be saying, okay, okay, we need to make sure we pick freshmen, sophomores, junior, seniors, and so we're going to look at all of the freshmen, sophomores, junior, seniors across the state of Illinois, in my case, and we're going to pick them randomly, and then we have to go find each. Okay, So that's part of the reason why sometimes clusters is easier, because then you don't have to travel around so much or try to track people down. All right, simple random. So let's review that. SRS. Simple random sample. I wonder if there's any stats teachers whose last name is S who 
purposely have a child and give, make their initials SRS. Just curious. If you happen to know one, put a note down in the comments. All right, anyway, so getting serious now. What you're going to do is you're going to choose a group from the population. Got to make some room. We're going to leave some room over here for steps. I think I've got enough room here. From a population. So that every individual and group of individuals has an equal likely chance equally likely chance is probably more of being chosen so occasionally you would run the risk of having groups underrepresented potentially so, for example, there may be ethnic groups here in the United States that we don't have lots of, but you want to make sure that they're in part of your survey. So that's why you might use a stratified random sample for that, to ensure that you get some input from that. Now, again, remember here are the steps for this. One, you're going to label everybody. Two, you're going to randomize everybody. And then three, you're going to select your group, okay? Now, hopefully you've gone through the check for your understanding. So let's talk through this and then we can discuss how this fits into random sampling. So factory runs 24 hours a day, producing wood pencils in three eight hour shifts. There's one in the day, the evening, the overnight. In the last stage of manufacturing, the pencils are packaged in boxes of 10 and each day of the sample, 300 tests or pencils are selected to inspect for quality. So the first of all is, how would you do a stratified random sample for this? Explain your choice of the strata. For each shift, um, you would end up saying, okay, and that's probably the easiest strata to do because there's not different types of pencils. So you're gonna say, we're gonna pick some from the day, the evening, and the overnight, and then um, you're choosing 100 pencils from each. So you're gonna label all the pencils, one through N, for each shift. You're gonna choose 100 pencils, or 100 numbers out of that list, and then you're gonna examine those pencils. Now. We'll talk about what might be the problem with that down at the end. The second one is a cluster sample. Clusters would be the boxes of pencils. And so then you would just say, all right, I'm gonna go through, instead of labeling all the pencils one through N, which is the maximum number, we're gonna label all the boxes one through however many boxes we have. And then we're gonna go through and choose that. Sorry, make sure I look fantabulous. Mr. Hayes, that's not what, yeah, I know, okay, thanks. Anyway, so um, you're gonna go through and then you'll choose 30 at random and examine all the pencils in those 300 boxes. So you're not choosing individual pencils, you're choosing boxes of pencils to examine. Now the drawback to each of these is that the stratified, you get a lot more precise estimate, okay, because you're doing all, you're making sure all the shifts are represented. There's nothing worse than being said that everybody's doing a lousy job when you're not doing the lousy job. Um, so stratify would make sure that everybody gets represented in that one. Clusters just makes it so much simpler. Can you imagine having to go through and find, you know, pencil number 3,973, or probably millions at this point, because I'm going to guess they make quite a bit, um, and then pull it out of the box, inspect it, and put it back? I mean, I would even just think they're trying to find 100 boxes, or 300, how many boxes are we pulling? Do, 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 do. Actually, that should be only 100 boxes there. See, good thing I was looking at this. Okay, yeah, all pencils in the 30 boxes, sorry. So um, choose 30 boxes. I mean, so even finding those 30 boxes out of all the ones that are being made would just seem to be kind of crazy. But that's we're just putting it in context. We're not saying which one's best at this point. So hopefully that helps. Um, again, if you need the first part of the video, check. Let's see, it's probably over there. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, it'll be up above. And we'll see you later. We're going to spend one more time. We've got one more lesson with our friend Justin Timberlake here. And then we'll get into some more of the nitty-gritty with how these things all work. Talk to you soon.